So again, going back to the word of like reclamation, which was used so many times um, in the piece, especially if you watch the documentary, you hear that word a lot, a lot like reclaiming, um, reclaiming life, reclaiming time, reclaiming your body. Um, we really wanted to lean into that. Like, I'm deciding as a, as a woman, as a black woman, as um, whatever this society's decided to call like other, um, I'm deciding that that no longer serves me. Um, whatever I feel like I'm lacking or whatever I feel doesn't um, uh, match up with what other people um, think is right, um, I don't care about that any anymore because I'm reclaiming my right to live, how I want to live and to live fully. Um, so healing came even in the process of creating this entire project. Um, and I hope that people can see the healing in each of the dance pieces. What if this is all just a dream? My name's Camille Jones. I'm born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm a multidisciplinary artist I'm here in Cincinnati. I dance, I write, and I'm a collaborative person, so I collaborate on a lot of different projects with different artists here in the city. So I'm a part of a project called Yemeya, Sister to the Distant Yet Rising Star. Um, it's a collaborative project between myself um, uh, and my dance team, CA Squared, um, which is made up of my sister Chanel, my dance chosen sister Anaya Nicole, and then of course myself Camille Jones, and then our collaborators Warmth Culture, which is made up of CJ Wooten and Alex Stallings. Um, and together we worked with other artists. So we extended like our, um, our tree to include other artists. So that meant DJs like DJ Queen Celine and DJ Ra D and visual artists. So Monster audio and visual team, pixel designs um, and DJ Pillow. We all came together to bring forth this um, sort of reimagining of a piece that was originally presented at Blink in October 2022. Um, and the idea started with uh, Warmth. So they actually applied to be a part of Blink um, and they just had an idea to sort of activate audiences. So of course they wanted music because they deal primarily with um, DJs and, bring, and putting DJs on the, to the forefront, bringing DJs to the forefront um, and creating like musical landscapes with DJs. But they reached out to CA Squared because they wanted to add an extra element to that activation at Blink, and they wanted dance. Um, so they reached out to us, and Alex of Warmth threw out this uh, title, like a working title for called Yeme Ya, which is um, which was inspired by a film called Love Jones. And in that film, there's a scene where Lorenz Tate's character like recites a poem and um, in that poem he says like yeme ya sister to the distant something like that um, so that was just kind of like thrown out there just like oh yeah this would be kind of cool because we want to make sure we want to do something that just like I don't know it just, just engages audiences so I took that title and kind of like ran with it um, and I created some original poems for the piece and CA Squared choreographed uh, three different phases for the uh, activation and with the help of the DJs, we created this like really cool, um, I don't even know, like this really cool just sort of uh, presentation, like this body of work. So we had like DJs performing sets and then the dancers, we presented our choreography that also coincided with the poems that I wrote. Um, and yeah, it just came together, together like that for Blink. So that was like a really like quick little like snapshot. But then the following year, or this year, um, there was an opportunity to apply for the Arts Wave Black and Brown Artist Grant um, that CJ sort of like threw out there to, to the group. And then it kind of just went from there. We, we decided we were gonna go for it. So uh, CJ and I um, wrote and submitted the grant. And yeah, we thankfully got the grant, which is <laughs> really, really cool. We were not expecting that really. Um, and then we were able to bring um, or again, like I guess, bring more life into this original idea. Um, and that's what you saw this year at this artist showcase. We curated two events. So we curated a, um, a brunch for uh, Women's History Month, and then we 
presented the actual um, performance art project uh, in May at 21C uh, Museum Hotel. And so that one was primarily basically bringing that little show that happened at Blink, that activation at Blink, and just bringing it um, onto like a, into a more intimate environment um, and extending those phases out um, and creating a more fleshed out storyline. So the film is a part of the grant, but for like the longest time I've wanted to just create a documentary, um, essentially of like just a, a process of a project. Um, and that's something I just talked about with my dance team a lot. So I sort of like pitched it to everyone, so Warmth and CA Squared um, throughout this like grant process and they were completely on board and we already had Monsta um, who was in charge of basically documenting uh, the Blink performance. Um, so Monsta was already on board to, to film and capture for the Artswave grant project. So essentially what we just decided to do was show everything from the very inception. So show those steps, like the beginning stages from Blink and then bring it all the way to this point where we actually presented the final piece, the final fully fleshed out um, piece at the 21C performance. Um, so yeah, that, the documentary was something that kind of was always in my mind, always like a, a dream to me to be able to do. Um, and I think it helps too. It adds to like the story of um, like seeing women, seeing like female presenting figures in leadership roles, um, women of color, non-binary people stepping up in, into these like huge roles um, and reclaiming what belongs to them, like taking up space and, and you know, being explosive with their voices, with their bodies, with their, with their ideas. Um, and I think that's what the, the documentary did like successfully. Like I was really blown away by it. I think it turned out better than I even like imagined it. So I'm really proud of it. I'm super grateful to Monster and Monster's team for doing that for us. It honestly was a huge deal for uh, both me and Chanel because for the longest time we just talk about all these aspirations that we have um, and we've always been like that even since we were kids we would just like dream together <laughs> and just like talk about our ideas um, so for this to happen for us to to receive like this grant um, and to be able to work with people that we really care about and that we believe in and um, that we are inspired by, uh, that meant so much. That meant that first that we were affirmed, um, that somebody saw whatever idea that we had and said, okay, this is something that needs to come to life. Um, and it also, it also confirmed that we do possess all the tools um, that we need to accomplish our goals. So we don't need to look outside of ourselves too much for whatever it is we think, you know, will help us get to wherever we need to go. Um, Cause I think oftentimes we think, oh, I'm not um, brave enough or I'm not creative enough or whatever it is that you think you're lacking. You're really not lacking at all. Um, and this was a, a testament of that, of that truth really, because that grant was submitted again, like we didn't think too much of it. We were just like, just try. I'm always, I'm a big person on just trying things. Like even if you're like, oh, I'm just gonna fail, at least try. So we tried, we let it go, we put it out there. And then for us to get the news that we received the grant was just like, okay, maybe we are enough, <laughs> you know, maybe we, we can do this thing. So yeah, it was really affirming and just again, sealed, um, sealed something in our hearts that we do possess all those qualities to achieve greatness. I'll start with uh, where the inspiration came as I wrote the poetry for our project. Um, I just thought a lot about Yemeya as this, um, this, this figure, uh, especially in like African um, folklore mythology. Uh, Yemeya represents life um, and when I, read about all these things and I'm thinking about uh, like life and where life comes from. And at the time, my sister was also pregnant. Um, like she got, she, did we? No, I think we got the grant 
right before she actually gave birth. So we, there was just so many things. Like, life was literally changing for my entire family. Um, and I was, was sort of, I was so inspired by her. Like, throughout her process, her entire pregnancy, I was so inspired by the woman that she was evolving into. Um, and she completely represented, all, like, that figure that I was studying at the same time. Um, and it wasn't an easy process for her. I mean, it's, you know, that's huge. That's a life-changing experience. Um, and I sort of leaned into that. Like, what does that look like when a person, when a woman is, their body's changing in an entirely new way? And not even just their body, but their mind too. And you're sort of preparing yourself for like, preparing yourself for a new life. Um, and what does that mean to you? And then how does that change how you see yourself in the world? Because again, I talked about how we, we spend so much time sort of like talking ourselves ourselves out of things or we feel like we, we just don't have enough to achieve something. But I think I was just like witnessing this evolution in my sister where she was like, whatever I think about myself, even if I thought I've like lacked something in the past, that no longer matters now because I have to just get ready for this new being that's stepping into the world who needs me. And yeah, that was just so um, profound for me to, to witness. Um, and I started to read more about how Yemeya, um, the storytelling of Yemeya is used um, to sort of be representative of the struggle that, well, just the plight of black women and black femininity and, and like what it just means for people to be black and feel that their blackness isn't under attack, to be a, a black woman and feel like you're being a black, being black and a woman aren't like um, two opposing things or like, or two problems at the same time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this piece allowed us to explore all those things, like this, this really complicated, you know, um, like bowl of just uh, ideas and concepts and constructs and um, stereotypes and sort of just kind of decide we want to just be like throw those all away and just decide how we want to present ourselves and what our story looks and sounds like. Um, so again, going back to the word of like reclamation, which was used so many times um, in the piece, especially if you watch the documentary, you hear that word a lot, a lot like reclaiming, um, reclaiming life, reclaiming time, reclaiming your body. Um, we really wanted to lean into that. Like I'm deciding as a, as a woman, as a black woman, as um, whatever dis society's decided to call like other, um, I'm deciding that that no longer serves me. Um, whatever I feel like I'm lacking or whatever I feel doesn't um, uh, match up with what other people um, think is right, um, I don't care about that any anymore because I'm reclaiming my right to live how I want to live and to live fully. Um, so healing came even in the process of creating this entire project. Um, and I hope that people can see the healing in each of the dance pieces um, and, and see the healing, see the, the, the point of like, of the healing in each of those phases. Cause phase one, you see like the vulnerability, phase two, you see those moments of having to fight and the resistance against what society tells you is right um, and how you're wrong, you just show up wrong, you're born wrong. And then phase three, deciding, you know what, I don't care about any of that because I, I, I'm choosing to accept who I am and I'm choosing to live how I wanna live and present myself to the world. I mean, we're ever evolving, right? Um, there's no like mountaintop where you're like, I've made it, I'm here, I finally, I'm healed, right? Um, but I do think like stepping into this process, I, I felt that I had like this, um, just this urgency to be like, we gotta hit all these things. We gotta, cause this is how we've all felt like just listening to um, the stories of women, you know? Um, this is how we've all felt. We're at a place where we feel empowered to even talk about um, discrimination and sexism and all these things, racism. Um, we're at a place to talk about these things. We have the tools to talk about them as artists, you know? Um, so I felt like uh, that urgency to just like hit the ground running and to nail all these, um, these topics. And I think everyone did, like we just kind of knew that we wanted to make this like something like really, um, you know, deep, 
creepy and <laughs> be profound. Um, but I think also within the process, we just sort of made discoveries along the way um, about ourselves too and about how, um, how like this is a, a, a women-led project. So I think we learned like how to lean on each other in a new way um, as collaborators, as, as women, as friends, as family. Um, so that was a discovery. And I think it also allowed us to discover new um, areas that needed to be healed. Because, because as we were bringing this project to life, again, there were so many things happening in our private lives. Though we were collaborators and we worked together so much, there were personal things happening um, privately that we as women had to sort of carry, that we thought we had to carry on our own, um, but in those little moments where we were able to talk to each other, as we were talking about the project, maybe somebody w would reveal something, and that was our opportunity to be like, okay, wait, what happened? Like, let's, let's talk about that, or even in moments where you maybe have felt fearful or that you couldn't talk to um, the people in the group, which happened too, and that's natural. Um, we got to a point towards the end of the project where we had like long discussions about these are moments when we were working together where I felt like kind of alone or that I was just struggling at work or I haven't slept because I have a newborn, like things like that. And I was like, I didn't even know you were dealing with that. And then we're talking about it for hours and our project is complete by this point, but we're still having these phone, con like these phone conferences just to talk about these things. And that was like, deepening the community that we had already built. Um, so yeah, we did heal even more, even more than I had even um, anticipated in the process. I hope that viewers just go away with like a, a, a feeling, like whatever that is, it doesn't have to be anything that I dictate, but just leave with a feeling. I hope that they remember the piece and it stays with them and it, it follows them um, in life. Um, and I hope whatever that feeling that they're left with um, informs like decisions to have like positive transformation. I think a truth that is expressed in the Yemeya project um, that I like personally, personally relate to is just to Step out with boldness and, and embrace who you are, yeah, and be like fully embrace that. You don't have to apologize for who you are. Um, I have a tendency to, to, to always say sorry. Um, and that, there's nothing wrong with that either. I think it's, it's a good thing to be able to apologize um, quickly and to have empathy and compassion. But I do sometimes apologize sort of maybe to like, I don't know, maybe to shrink myself or to sort of be like uh, overly accommodating. Um, and I've learned to sort of find new ways to work at, around that, um, especially when I'm like apologizing for something that isn't even my fault. So like, cause I'll have a tendency to even just take on like, okay, I'll like, you know what I mean? Take on the responsibility of like someone else's hurt or whatever it is, um, or just feel like, because I couldn't fix a situation that it's on me, even though it had, didn't really have anything to do with me. Um, but yeah, I've been learning how to just sort of be like, Camille, like, it's okay to be you, it's okay to be bold, it's okay to not always, um, it's okay to not always just be like, you know, the pleaser, you know, um, or to be super liked or anything like that. Um, so just step it in with your boldness and embrace that and be comfortable in that. Um, and that's all I can control. If there's one thing to remember, I want viewers to remember to just reclaim their right to live fully human existences.